So today we're gonna to talk about health insurance for blended families and where to start when there's so many options. I love my big blended family, but one thing that I know um, about having one is that it can feel like a little bit of a circus, right? So many different needs, you don't even know where to start. So with health insurance, I'm gonna share with you in this video the process that I would take my clients if they came to me and they say, Alex, I have a blended family, where do I start? So navigating health insurance for a blended family can be really complicated because there's so many different coverage options and then, you know, lots of people and everybody has their own needs and it could be a little bit confusing on, on where to start. So first I'm going to preface this video with saying that um, I understand that all blended families are unique and with the family dynamics, some get along and some co-parent very well with this one and not over here with this one. And some families are amazing and they work all, you know, they work together and the communication is like super high standards. But since everybody's different, there's some things that you can do, like some prep work that you can do before you would reach out to me or to another agent to just be more efficient with your time when you're actually going to choose uh, the health plan for you guys. So the first thing I would do is I would ask about any employer plans, like if any of the parents or the, um, the, the step parents or any of the parents involved in the blended family have access to a group health plan. And I would want to know like if, if what the plan details are of those plans. Also, I want to know if um, it's enrollment time or if the enrollment time is coming up soon for all of those plans. We'd wanna know what kind of plan it was obviously and also what the cost would be. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky with, with employer plans because yes, they are really the best kind of insurance, especially if you work for a big company. Uh, typically they have the lowest out of pocket costs, but where it can get tricky is with adding family to like adding children and adding spouses, it can it can make the price very, very expensive. And so a lot of that depends on the size of the company and also the employer's contribution toward the family's portion um, of the monthly premium. So with blended families, the inevitable is that there's going to be parenting plans. And I'm not practicing family law here as a, you know, I'm just a, as a disclaimer, but I know a lot about it from the ins and outs of my own personal family. And so the parenting plan will usually say who pays for health insurance and will dictate, you know, anything that has to be done and whose responsibility it is to pay the health insurance, to choose it. And also like, is that a co-parenting decision? Is it something you have to make with your co-parent? So all of that is really important to have clear before you meet with your agent um, to go further, because if you're trying to get a plan and you're really not the person that's supposed to be making those decisions, you'll do a lot of work for really for nothing. So assuming that you are the one making the health insurance decision or that you have the co-parents on either side on board, then you want to look at um, employer plans. Okay, so once we've checked the box on the employer plans, we looked at everybody's plan, if they have one and just seeing all the details. Once we've moved past that, we will want to move to individual options. And so a lot of self-employed people are gonna fall under this umbrella where they're looking for individual insurance either on the marketplace or on the private market. Okay, so I'll go through those two options now. So once we're talking about individual, what I'm going to ask you is, I'm gonna ask you everybody's date of birth. I'm gonna to wanna to know the zip code where you live. And I'm also gonna to wanna to know their height, their weight. I'm gonna to wanna to know if anybody smokes, obviously the adults, if the adults are smokers. And I'm gonna to wanna to know if anybody in the family has any pre-existing conditions or if um, you're getting treated for any kind of conditions. Um, if you're taking any medication, any prescriptions, prescriptions that you've taken in the last 12 months are also gonna be important for some plans. Um, I don't need to know like the little, little bitty, you know, the Tylenols and the little antibiotics. I really wanna know like anything major. That's really what the some of the insurance companies are gonna wanna look at. And, um, and, I'm, and I'm gonna wanna know lifestyle. So lifestyle is really, really important when it comes to kids because we all know that kids can be active and accidents happen. They're still, ling limbs are growing and they're, they can be a little bit on the clumsy side. I know because I have age two all the way to 16 and they're all 
clumsy in their own way. Um, and so the thing that's most likely to happen with healthy families that are active like that are going to be accidents and injuries. So I'm really, when I'm asking those questions, what I'm doing is trying to filter down the, you know, the sea. It, I want to say it's like an ocean of plans that are available and trying to filter them down to what your specific needs are. And it can be a little bit confusing with a blended family, but, but we make it work. One thing I would want to know is who the kid's pediatrician is and if there's more than one pediatrician, like in my family there's three pediatricians that are involved, I'd want all of their names, I'd want to know um, any urgent cares that, you know, any of the families or when, or when their dad's home, home or mom's home that you would go to if something were to happen, if one of the kids got sick and you had to take them in the middle of the night, where would you go? Would you go to the ER? Would you go to an urgent care center that was open 24 hours? I'd like to know all those names because I want to make sure that when, if something happens that's unexpected, even something minor, that you can go to the same place that you've that you're used to going what, what's already comfortable for you and also if there's any doctors that the adults would like to keep any doctors that you want to keep seeing especially if you're getting treated for any kind of a condition like um, hypothyroidism is a really common one with, with with women and i see that they'll go to the endocrinologist and they don't want to change because it's kind of like you built you know they have all your history they know you they've done all the testing and to start with a different doctor you just kind of have like feel like you have to start over and so knowing those doctors um, up front really helps. I'm also gonna wanna know what are your non-negotiables. Like what I see a lot with blended families is you might have like one or two children with uh, specific needs that are a little bit more you know, intensive than, than the other kids, where the other kids are super healthy, it's not a big deal. They, they like to keep their pediatrician, you know, but it's not a huge deal if they don't. Um, there usually will be, and as in my family, this is the case where, you know, one child needs therapy covered or an occupational therapy. Those are the kind of things that are not covered on every plan or, and they're definitely not covered the same on every plan. And so I'll want to know if any, any of the children have any specific, um, type of services, mental health, occupational uh, therapy, speech therapy, those are common ones that I see that we want to make sure that those are covered. And also um, for the moms and or the mom, the stepmom, you want to know, is anybody planning to have another baby? Are you still in the baby making phase? Are you looking to get pregnant? Um, are you looking for fertility, you know, kind of things? knowing that certain things like fertility are not typically covered by individual plans. Some employer plans might cover them, but really on the individual marketplace, all of that is gonna be self-pay. So that will help us really plan ahead. And next I'm gonna to wanna to know about budget. So what really helps me do this with my clients is I will ask them, are you currently insured? And if they're not, then I ask them when the last time they had insurance was. And I wanna know what you're paying. If you are insured, what you're paying or what you paid in the past. And also I'd want to know with the employer plan, what, if that is an option and you're comparing individual, you know, to see if the individual, individual plan is going to be better for you, then I want to know what would be the cost of the employer plan. Why? Because those costs, either what you pay or paying now, or what you have potentially to pay with an employer plan, those are going to be kind of like our anchors and our, my markers to determine, okay, this is what's going to be comfortable for them to afford. If it's not, if it's cheap to put, you know, like extremely affordable to put the whole family on an employer plan, we're not even going to go further. I'm just going to advise that you go ahead and take that amazing opportunity. Um, I often, I hate to say it, but I don't see that very often. It's they're usually we're comparing like pretty expensive, um, options, but sometimes it does happen, especially with huge companies. And so we want to make sure, I want to make sure that you're comfortable. I also want to know it's not only about monthly premium, because that's one consideration when it comes to the financial part of health insurance, but it's really knowing like if something happened, you know, someone got in a car accident or there's, there's a surgery that was needed. What would be your comfortable exposure like what would be the max that you would be able to afford can you put ten thousand dollars on a credit card can you fork over five thousand dollars do you have um, a savings account for you know emergencies and things like that if something happened what is the comfortable exposure for you and so how we look at the another uh, thing to add to the financial part is there's monthly premium so some people want to keep their monthly premium as low as possible and they are more comfortable being exposed on the back end so if something happens which everybody you know feels like it never won't will happen but if, if it does they're comfortable with that exposure and they want to pay the least the other um, the other option would be 
as you increase the monthly premium, you, you can just expect that the um, out of pocket on the back end is going to be less. So some people, they'd rather just pay more monthly because it's like, you know, they, they, they won't have to come up with so much money later on. And having a blended family can be expensive, lots of kids, lots of sports and activities and lots of food, at least in my house, a lot of food. Um, and so those are all things to consider. Do you want to pay more per month or do you want to pay less per month? And it's pretty much, you know, weighing those two, those two things. So a common misconception is to uh, think that all of the, like a family has to be on a family plan and you have to find the one plan that fits every single person in the family. It's just not that way anymore. Over the years, I've really seen that Sometimes a family can save thousands and thousands of dollars a year by splitting up the family and getting certain coverage for the people that need need that specific coverage and then something else for the rest of the family. And that there's no real huge benefit to having like one family plan over that. So we're seeing that more and more when there's just different fan or different people in the family with different needs. And so with blended families, you know, this is definitely the case. Like I'll give you an example. In my family, most of us are on a underwritten PPO. We have a nationwide network and we save a lot because you have to be healthy to get onto those plans. And so we save thousands of dollars a year just by putting the majority of the family on one of those plans. And now a couple of the kids have marketplace insurance. Um, they have a couple, they have some needs that need to be, that are covered a little bit better on the marketplace than they would be otherwise. And so just having, you know, just separating the family out a little bit. Now, it might not stay that way. I like to reassess every single year and I like to do that with my clients too because needs change, you know. And, and that's the good, the great thing about health insurance. It's month to month, so you're not locked into any long-term contract. You pay your monthly premium and they cover you, but you can actually change insurance um, year to year if the needs no longer fit. So I've given you a lot. Um, it seems a little bit confusing, right? Well, the best uh, part about that is that you don't have to do it yourself and I would not try. I would not advise to try to do this yourself. You'll get stuck in the weeds. And so having someone that really understands not only from a professional perspective, but from a personal perspective, someone like me who can really put together, it's like solving a puzzle really. And so, you know, reach out to me. You can reach me at alexthehealthagent.com or follow me on Instagram where I have a lot of other videos, some about blended families and some all about like technical jargon that, you know, that you'll, you'll have a better understanding of if you can watch those. And if you like this video or you know somebody that would find it helpful, please share it and comment and subscribe.